Uh, I, you know, it, it's an interesting question. I, I think Sam Bradford's a better quarterback, and this is what people have misunderstood on what I've been saying. Uh, but I think Mark Sanchez is a better fit for this offense. And as you just mentioned, Chip Kelly doesn't want to be the guy uh, who wants to change from what brought him to this league and, and what he was described as an innovator for. So he wants to run that offense, and if you want to run that offense, Sam Bradford can't be your quarterback. Not saying Mark Sanchez is the perfect fit because he's far from it. He's just a better fit. And you saw when he got into the game yesterday, you saw the tempo. It just seemed quicker. There was more alacrity to it. And obviously it ends with the with the Sanchez end zone pick, and that's the narrative of his career, and everybody's going to hang on that, understandably so. But if you take a step back as a whole, the offense looked a lot more like a Chip Kelly offense. So he comes in, plays well plays the next two weeks and they win do they go back to Bradford no no if he wins uh the next two weeks and by the way I expect him to two games over 11 days he got Tampa Bay next week at home and then he had Detroit on Thanksgiving uh I expect him to win both those games and he's going to continue to play you can't take him out of the lineup uh if he's won two straight games now Chip can still lean on the fact that, that Sam has the shoulder problem and is concussed, and that's the way he'll he'll go. He's not going to name Mark Sanchez the starter, but if he wins both of those games, he's not taking him out of the lineup. Um, I think that's pretty interesting because I'm not sure that, that – I, I tend to believe that if Bradford's ready to come back, that he might go back to him, but I might be completely off on that because, you know – Again, we've been saying that all year long, that he doesn't want to look like he made a mistake. If he keeps letting Sanchez go out there and perform, doesn't that kind of indicate that I made a mistake? Yeah, but he has an out now because of the injury. I, I think you're you're 100% right. He would have never moved to Mark Sanchez, even if they kept losing consistently. Say Sam Bradford doesn't get hurt yesterday. They lose that game. They lose again to Tampa, and they lose on Thanksgiving against Detroit. I still don't think he makes the move to Mark Sanchez. But now he has an out in the fact that Bradford is injured. So if they keep winning football games, he can lean on that and say, Sam's still the starter, but he's not healthy enough to play and sort of ride the Sanchez wave if he's successful. That's the way I think he would spin it. Did they lose that game because Sam Bradford got hurt yesterday? Uh, no, I, there were so many things. It, and Dominic and Sue just destroyed the interior of the Eagles' offensive line. You had special teams issues, which are rare for this team. Even a guy you never hear mentioned, John Dorenbos, the long snapper, had a terrible game. Uh, so there were a number of issues that went far beyond the fact that the quarterback was hurt. Uh, and, and namely, you got back sort of to those early September woes. The offensive line was getting whipped so badly up front. You had a lot of negative plays. Uh, the running game doesn't get going, and all of a sudden you're behind the sticks and you have all those issues we saw before. Uh, I think that was a bigger issue than the fact that the quarterback got hurt. John McMullen, 97.3 ESPN.com. You know, um <laughs> Uh, Bradford, I guess uh, they're saying that the injury is a shoulder and a and a um, concussion here, which would probably leave him out at least this week. We know uh, they have a short turnaround because they play on Thanksgiving, and uh, Sanchez did play on Thanksgiving pretty well last year, so the feeling would be that he probably gets two games here. Um, and as we just kind of discussed, John, the offense looked like it moved a little bit and, and kind of um, you know put it itself in position to score. What did you think of the Sanchez interception, though? I mean, you put that on him, Miles Austin, Chip Kelly for calling that play, take the points, kick the field goal. Uh, g give us your your thoughts when you saw the pick. Well, I, I think it, it, it does lay at the feet of the quarterback. He shouldn't have thrown the pass, but uh, I say that also understanding it was a terrible route by Miles Austin, so he deserves some of the criticism as well. Uh, but you have to understand situational football, and that's been one of Mark Sanchez's greatest flaws uh, dating back to his days with the Jets is the fact that 
uh, even if you, you check that ball down, even if you throw it away uh, to live another day, you're going to take the lead in the game with a chip shot field goal. So you have to understand that and not try to force things in that type of situation. So definitely the majority of the blame goes to the quarterback, but I, I think people that were piling on as it's natural to do and saying it was completely Sanchez's fault, I, I think that's not true. Uh, I think Austin deserves some of the criticism as well. Nonetheless, quarterback's got, uh, obviously, uh, he's got his hands on the football, and it's his decision to, to try to fit that throw in there. And it was a bad decision by Mark Sanchez. Uh, you were there, John. What was the Jason Peters uh, story? And Did he want to play? Was he upset that he didn't play? Well, what do you know about Peters not playing yesterday? No, I mean, I, I think he always wants to play. I, I think they erred on the side of the culture. One of, one of the issues, and I tweeted out before the game, and I, I felt this from not only the fan base, but inside the building at Novacare, I think, I think the Eagles kind of took this game for granted. And I don't think mediocre football teams can do that against any team. And, and I thought they could get – their mentality was they could get another week and they wouldn't have an issue against a bad Dolphins team. Uh, I, I don't know where that sense, sort of sense of entitlement comes from, from both the Eagles and the fan base, but this is a team that can't take anyone for granted. Uh, but I, I think that spoke more to the Jason Peters story than everything, anything else. They, they understand they're a much better football team with Peters and Lane Johnson out there at the same time rather than Lane Johnson and Dallas, Dennis Kelly. And Lane played well again. He he played well enough to win. The bigger issue is the other side. If if you don't have Jason Peters in there, that means Dennis Kelly's playing right tackle, and that's an issue. They had a lot of success, John, with Selleck and Ertz in the first half of that game. Did the Dolphins take them away, or did Kelly get away from using them? No, I think the Dolphins adjusted a little bit. Chip ran the same play about a dozen times. So uh, when they were getting those wide open looks, and there's the one, you know, probably the only bad Sam Bradford pass in the first half. He also had Zach Ertz on that same look, wide open, uh, and he missed him. Uh, they they ran that play consistently, and it worked tremendously. Obviously, early in the game, and the, and the Dolphins kind of adjusted and did a better job defending it. Uh, and that's what happens. When, you, when you're a repetitive play caller, uh, early things might look great, uh, but you're going to keep going back to the same well again and again. Teams are going to adjust and start to take those things away. One of my biggest issues about that offense is, is the repetitiveness of the play calling. Uh, now, what, what kind of... Uh, covers that up a bit is the fact that the tempo really has the defense on its heels when things are going well but when they're when they don't have that tempo that repetition is an issue and people have picked up on it uh the wide receivers yesterday were abysmal um two <laughs> <laughs> we've, been, we've been talking about that for months we sure have um the sad part is jordan matthews was <laughs> Uh, it's amazing that we're even going to say this. Jordan Matthews had, what, three catches yesterday, um, and he got outperformed by Josh Huff on the day, uh, who got outperformed by Nelson Aguilar on the day. Two guys were on the field for almost 100 snaps and didn't get a pass, that being Miles Austin and Riley Cooper. Today, John, Chip Kelly felt that he has enough talent at wide receiver. I know he probably doesn't believe that if you asked him, but, how much of this goes to Chip Kelly, the general manager, that didn't know that he didn't have enough receiver talent? Oh, a lot of it. Uh, that's the bigger issue. More than a coaching thing, that's that's the GM aspect in that he should have realized uh, that you can't expect rookies like Nelson Aguilar. You can't expect second-year players who haven't produced and aren't really natural receivers like Josh Huff to – to put up the same kind of production uh, a, a proven player like Jeremy Macklin can. Uh, so that definitely falls more on the general manager. I, I don't blame Chip when he says 
looked at in the press conference. That's one thing I won't blame him for. As a head coach in this league, you never want to throw your players under the bus, and he understands. But doesn't he do it, though? Doesn't he, doesn't he do it at some instances? He's okay with throwing guys under the bus, and it seems like in other ones he does. It's like, you know, he tries to take little digs here and there, it seems like, at guys. Yeah, I, and I agree with you. He does do that, and I criticize him when he does that because that's what you shouldn't be doing. Uh, he should be trying to protect protect his players and shoulder the blame, sort of like Andy Reid did, and I know people didn't like it, but that's what you should do as a head coach in this league. Uh, and you're right, he will take a dig at the occasional player here and there. I, I don't think that's the way to go about things. So I, I'm not surprised he protected the receivers, but believe me, he knows. He He understands this group isn't good enough now, and that's why you've seen – uh, there was a lot of 12 personnel. We talked about that a lot. Uh, this group is healthy. Chip Kelly wants to play three receivers, and at least he's acknowledging that they're not good enough. So instead, he's playing a lot more two tight ends because the bottom line is Brent Selleck is a better player than whoever you want to name, whether it's Riley Cooper, Josh Huff, Nelson Aguilar, Miles Austin. He's better than all of them. So that's the best way – the Eagles can move forward, and that's what they did for the most part against Miami. All right, John and I will have plenty more tomorrow. Uh, I'm sure Bradford and Sanchez's name might be brought up tomorrow. That's just a hunch. Never know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be live. It might be, obviously. And by the way, if Mark Sanchez wins that game, I think the quarterback controversy is full blown at this point. The fact that he threw that end zone interception kind of stemmed the tide on it, but. I think Chip Kelly is, I wouldn't say happy, but I think he's going to look at this and he's going to enjoy seeing what some of that functional mobility we talk about and get back to doing more of what he wants to do consistently on the offensive side of the ball. I don't think he's losing sleep over the fact Mark Sanchez is going to be starting probably the next two games. Uh, By the way, right now, is Thad Lewis, would he be the backup next week? Yes, Thad Lewis it would be the backup next week, and they still have Stephen Morris on the practice squad, but I, I don't think they would elevate him at this point. I think they would be comfortable with Sanchez as the starter and Thad Lewis as the backup. All right, uh, John McMullen tomorrow live at the Golden Nugget. We'll have plenty more on this, the NFC East, which realistically – I don't think anything changed. <laughs> Washington won, but no, I don't know. It didn't. No, uh, Washington won. I don't know how uh, how how confident you feel in them, but uh, they won yesterday. That's more than everybody else can say. All right, man. We'll see you tomorrow. All right. Thanks, Mike.